What's up? It's Josh Hewitt, Top Four Fitness. Once again, it is time to do it with Hewitt, and I'm here with uh, Coach Ty Walner. How you doing, bro? Okay, man. Good to see you. Good. Uh, we go way back. Worked at the tr same training studios back in the day, and uh, today we're going to hit a little bit of a back workout. But I thought we'd have a little chat before because uh, we're both on a really similar path as far as personal growth and self-discovery and helping others uh, grow not only improve physically but also spiritually and mentally. All the above. I think there's a, there's a large interest out there in people that are seeking the same seekers yes. who, who know that there's just more, that there's more uh, potential for them than just beyond the physical that they get in the gym. So this is, uh, this is why it's important to talk about it and bring it to awareness. Yeah, I think that's it's also because even though it is becoming a more prevalent topic, it is something that not everyone is sort of open to, to talking about, right? You know, and, and people have this, this sort of image of themselves and other people as well share that image of the, us as, uh, say, gym rats if you're really into the working out and uh, into the gym atmosphere. And they may, may neglect to, to mention the other side of the story. So, I mean, even though for some people it's awkward to get into, I think it's an important thing to, to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I can speak from my experience. Um, you know, I've had several people reach out to me and say, you know, I, I thought about training with you, but I was intimidated because I didn't want to lift heavy barbells, yeah. thinking that that's what I was limited to. Yeah. But people don't know that, you know, yourself and myself, like, we're really interested in a holistic point of view, uh, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and making that like a community. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're more than just good looks and muscles, guys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> definitely good looking. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, we're going to get in a workout too. We're not just going to talk your ear off. <laughs> but uh, so today we're going to hit uh, back day. Back attack. You've got to train the body holistically, but one area that a lot of people neglect is the posterior chain. Absolutely. So, so I thought we'd show, show you guys maybe a few exercises what, that we use in the program and just work on isolating the stuff in the back. And plus, I want to have freaking wide wings. So yeah, yeah, yeah. aesthetically, it's nice. Yeah, so you want to look good walking away. Yes, <laughs> that V. That's right. I will uh, show you guys some of the footage with that uh, as we go. Awesome. Okay, cool, man. And I think this all ties in. Like uh, the physical, the mental, emotional, spiritual. I mean, a lot of people think if you're really into the uh, personal growth and spiritual growth that you're not into the, to the working out and the, the other side of things, but it all ties in. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree with that. And, uh, you know, for me, the, the value of, of working out is lost if I'm just working on the physical portion. Mm -hmm. You know, like the strength that I acquire physically, if I'm not able to put that into application in other parts of my life and become a better person and to treat people differently and, and make an impact in this world, then I feel like there's a real disconnect. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think that's one thing that I know for myself when I first got into the iron game, so to speak, it was as a compensation for feeling insecure or feeling a little bit skinny or weak. And I started to lift uh, to sort of to compensate for that. And it was all about the physical. I wanted to just be bigger and stronger. And I was uh, like, I intentionally sort of neglected the other side of myself because I didn't, I thought that made me weaker to sort of acknowledge the other side of, you know, the spiritual side of myself or the self awareness. But thankfully, uh, through making this part of my lifestyle, I've sort of realized that. Uh, being physically active, taking care of your body, training, movement is very much tied into the rest. In fact, through even yogis and other practitioners throughout the world are using physical methods to help achieve self-realization. Yeah, I know I, I totally agree with you, Josh. I can relate to that too. I think I think this this earth plane that we're on is a real healing ground and you can only hide from your spirit for so long. If you come to this earth plane, you've come here in a deeper mission to heal. There's no doubt about that. That's there's a there's a bigger meaning to this lifetime than just uh, growing up having a family and dying. So your physical is just a vessel. It's just a means for you to have those process of healing. Um, so again, if you if you hide, the spirit will talk, and your body will have to listen at some point. Yeah. Hopefully, you get that in time before real sickness comes. Yeah, there's this the saying. Uh, 
that if you don't find a way to motivate yourself to make some changes now, life's going to come around and motivate you in a way you might not like later on, yeah. which is often a form of sickness or illness or injury. So, and, and now that I'm incorporating meditation into my routine as well, it's they go hand in hand, and I've found that uh, I can make mindfulness and meditation part of my training, just being very aware of my body, not being distracted by thoughts here and there. That, that's amazing. I mean, they say feeling is, is healing. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're using your, your physicality as a means of meditation is key because, you know, I get a lot of people who say, well, I don't have time to meditate. I hardly have time to work out. <clears throat> well, for me, you know, I found it easier to meditate while I exercise because there's a whole bunch of emotions that can be uh, evoked through exercise, like, like you were saying, feelings mm -hmm. of anger, even feelings of sadness or whatever kind of feelings, when they come up, they're there because they are ready to be addressed. So what better way than to put it through the physical means of exercise? That's why we feel so amazing afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily need to have two portions of the day separated, like exercise and meditation, when you can make them blend together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I've recognized that in general, that there seems to be an awakening of, or a, a, a heightening of consciousness in the planet overall. And that might not be uh, so uh, self-evident when we start to see some of the atrocities that are still happening. But with every frick, uh, with every change, in a, even in a good direction, there's some friction. And, and I'm encountering more and more and more people that when I talk about these ideas, maybe expecting them to be like, what are you talking about, man? Let's, let's just go pump, wait. Yeah. And I'm surprised, they're like, yeah, man, I've been thinking a lot about this yeah. too. And I'm like, wow, man, people ever, like a lot of people are really starting to realize there's more than just, I'm more than my physical body, and there's more than just this uh, dense reality we see around us. And you, you kind of said it, we, we have this collective consciousness, whether you know it or not, you're all part of it. And just like with the body in terms of physical training, the body will adapt to the stimulus put upon it. So the more resistance it has, the, the more it has to step up. And like you said, this world is not necessarily the prettiest place. We're dealing with a lot of hardships right now all over the world. And so there is a collective consciousness knowing that, hey, if we don't do something about it, you know, we're, we're going to have to endure even more pain. So uh, yeah, I think that we, it's undeniable. People are feeling this part that's like, where is this coming from? They're being more, they're, they're seeking more than ever. And uh, now is a good time to to bring that to awareness. Especially if you are in the health and wellness profession, uh, this is not just in the realm of spiritual leaders and uh, you know monks and Buddhas and, and yogis. We are working with people not just to make their biceps stronger, but we're working to make them stronger people, better people. And I think this is something that even if the person is not open to dealing with it directly, if you you can still help them with this. Absolutely. In conjunction with talking about their training and their nutrition and their energy and how they feel and getting in touch with their bodies and becoming more self-aware. It, it can be, you can sneak it in there. Absolutely. You can, whether they want to or not, you can help people become, <laughs> raise their energy and their consciousness a little bit. Definitely, definitely. People have asked me, they're like, well, well how, how do you do that? You said you talk about being holistic and that you encourage people and you help coach them to these, you know, these pillars of health. Well, it can be honestly as easy as a fitness professional as just holding a safe space for somebody, which means if somebody wants to have an emotional breakdown in session, just being judgment free and allow them to do that and don't interfere, that enough is healing for them and that can evoke a ton of healing. Yeah, and that's, that's something that we do often end up being, and I know if there's other trainers watching this, they can relate that we as trainers do often become, take on the role of a, a therapist, or at least a counselor, or at least an empathetic listener. For some people, that can be emotionally draining at, by the end of the day. But if you can be in a place, like you said, of non-judgmental uh, acceptance, then this can be one of the few places where people can can come and just train and just let it out and come out of that workout. Not only feeling like they can, uh, they had a really good physical workout, but they'll feel like lighter. Totally, like a release. There's a exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Release there. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. Right on. How about we provide like a very functional, practical tip for people to uh, to incorporate? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> one of the things I recommend to uh, clients specifically is to make sure that they're always tracking your their stats, their numbers. So, you should have an awareness of kind of where your numbers are, rep range, what you've done, what you've achieved, so you can kind of track your progress. But I recommend that if you do have a journal that you're keeping track, that on the opposite page you also have a feelings page. 
It's a great way to tune into your body and say, how are you feeling after that workout? How are you feeling after the day? How do you feel after you've eaten and you've nourished your body? So you have one page of stats, the statistical, and then the other side of feeling. So there's that yeah. inner outer. That's a, yeah, that's a great suggestion. And I started keeping a journal and uh, I've always journaled my workouts and my nutrition and everything as well. So this was a new thing for me to do what I call a life journal. Yeah. And uh, not only that, but I've also been uh, just journaling something that stood out to my attention in that day or a realization I had or if something was like an epiphany where I'm like, wow, man. Uh, for as far as a suggestion that I have is uh, incorporating some form of mindfulness, uh, if, whether it's formal mindfulness meditation um, or a lot of people think, oh, I don't have time for that or oh, I can't stop thinking. Or if it's just informal mindfulness, which is just take that attitude of being very present in whatever it is you're doing. And this is easier with very routine activities where you don't have to interact. So that could be just brushing your teeth in the morning, having your shower. If you're eating alone, eating very mindful, taste the food, chew it, feel it in your mouth. If you're going for a walk alone in the park, just be very aware of your footsteps on the ground and what's happening around you. That's a form of meditation. And the cool thing about mindfulness in particular for, as a form of meditation is it doesn't mean you have to be without thought. It just means let your thoughts come, but be aware of it. That's all it is. Don't get carried away with it. If you're having a bad day and you're having depressing thoughts, just realize that you aren't your thoughts. Just analyze and observe the thoughts, much in the same way you're saying you can get from journaling. Awesome, man. Everybody. This is great. All right. Hey, Look forward to doing it again. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, stay strong.